Hello everyone, a very very warm welcome. So today we will be starting with a very interesting chapter, a very short one. It's called uh, Towards Equality. This is a part of civics. It's chapter 9. Right. So what we will be focusing on in this particular chapter are the different ways in which people have fought against inequality. Right. We will be talking about how inequality exists, whether it exists in India or not, whether, uh, you know, in what different ways is it practiced and uh, how people have fought against inequality and, um, you know, the struggle for achieving equality is a long one. Um, so we'll be looking at all of those things. Very interesting chapter, very short chapter. So let's begin. Now, uh, in political science, everything has its basis in the Constitution, right? Uh, so, the Constitution says clearly, Constitution is the skeleton, right, of our country, uh, of all systems that exist in our country. So, the Constitution says that all people are equal in the eyes of law, right? And there should be no discrimination on grounds of religion, caste, sex, or class, or whether they are rich or poor, right? Our constitution also ensures political equality. How political equality, particularly through right to vote. Everyone has an equal right to vote. Every vote has equal value, right? So uh, my vote and uh, let's just say uh, my vote and Ambani's vote would have the same value, right? So this is political equality, right? Uh, so the constitution says that everyone is equal and there should be no discrimination. Now, but do we, do you think students that we have inequality in our system, in our country? Is there inequality is the question, right? Do you see, do you think everyone in the society is equal? We can only move ahead, right? When, when you understand and when you think that is everyone equal, does everyone have equal access to equal resources, right? Is everyone getting the same electricity, the same amount of electricity? Is everyone getting the same amount of um, clean water, right? Is everyone getting an, an opportunity to study, right? It is these things that make us realize that, you know, we are not equal. We are living in an unequal society. Right? Even if constitution says that, you know, we are all supposed to be equal, there should be no discrimination. But do you think, you know, from your heart, there is equality, right? So inequality, students, is a rife in our society. And the reasons for this inequality is poverty and disproportionate distribution of resources. Right? And millions of people continue to strive to fulfill their basic needs of food, clothing, and shelter. Therefore, no, we are not an equal society. We are an unequal one. Right? And poverty and disproportionate distribution of resources are the major reasons. Right? Now, what are the different causes of inequality in Indian society? We have three major ones, distinction based on caste, religious differentiation, and gender disparity. Now, distinction based on caste, right? Now, this is a reason, a cause for extensive inequality in India. And despite a lot of constitutional provisions, people are ill-treated and humiliated for being born into a particular caste, right? They're not given the same opportunities. They're not given the chance to live in the same environment. They're, they're you know, often um, living secludedly outside villages. They're given um, the, low, the lower jobs of cleaning sewages and stuff. You know, so they have reduced opportunities which force them to be marginalized. Nobody wishes to, you know... Um, be a part of the vicious cycle of poverty, but it is because of they belong, those people belong to a particular caste, right? They are ill-treated and humiliated and not given an equal chance to prosper and develop, okay? Next, we have religious differentiation. So religious differentiation is, you know, history is 
full of wars in the name of religion. The biggest example that we can come up with partition, right? Partition was also based on uh, the fact that we're all, um, you know, Hindus and Muslims had a divide. The country was divided into two. Although what our constitution says is that we are a secular country, the, the country will not ever favor any particular religion. But often, what we do find is that there is um, prejudiced behavior right, against a particular community on the basis of religion. And this leads to discrimination and injustice against certain communities. Okay? And it is these, um, a lot of times what happens is, students, that people are misguided, right? And they spread uh, communal tension in society. You find people giving hate speeches and stuff on the basis of religion. So, religious differentiation is a huge cause for inequality and rife in the society. Okay? It's a constant struggle. Next is gender disparity. This is one of the most major, uh, another major cause, right? Women on an average are paid less even today. Um, in countries, uh, even USA, women are paid less, right? They're deprived of quality education and life. They lack the same opportunities as men. So, for example, you know, from um, child brides to... Um, female uh, infanticide right. child marriages so you know they do not have a leverage against um, men right and the mortality rate is higher amongst girls as well so there is gender disparity in our society and it is a huge cause for inequality because of which women are um, you know unable to uh, have a say for themselves. Now, according to 2001 census data, students, women uh, compose 48% of the population, Muslims are 13% of the population, scheduled caste is 16% of the population, and Adivasis form 8% of the population. This population, students, continues to be deprived, right? Uh, and discrimination based on religion, caste, and sex is a significant factor in why people are treated unequally in India. Okay. Now let's talk about struggles for equality. Okay. Now, uh, students, India has witnessed several mass struggles where people have come together to fight for an issue that they particularly believe in. Right. Uh, before independence, it was racial discrimination. The Britishers often, you know, uh, discriminated against Indians. We were called as the brown people, right? Uh, then Mahatma Gandhi led a mass movement to attain freedom from British domination, right? Uh, in 19th century, there were a lot of other social reform movements as well. We have Ra Ram Mohan Roy, uh, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan, Swami Dayanand, Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar. Now, these were... Um, some of the major reformers who, you know, really fought to uplift, up, uplift the status of women in our uh, Indian society, right? So they played a very integral part and uh, the work that they've done required some real courage, right? People have struggled throughout for uh, the underprivileged, for women to, to, to be, so that they're uplifted and they have a say in the society. Right. Uh, so movements were also started to under uh, to uplift the underprivileged classes. Right. Um, the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribe. In this, you have Govindra Fule and Dr. Ambedkar. They were very important reformers on this end. Right. And um, Chipka movement is another example in very recent history. And students, this is a more of an environmental movement. Right. But it was linked to. Uh, uh, sustainable use of environment right, and how the locals need to be given rights over their land okay so let's uh, you know students now we will uh, look into detail what happened with the Chipko movement and um, what was it all about so Chipko movement began in 1970s right under the leadership of um, the Shaoli Gram 
Swarajya Sang, DGSS. And now these people, they wanted to assert their rights over the forest produce and Chipko in general means hug or to embrace, right? Now what happened was that this is basically in Uttarakhand that this thing started off with. So women, uh, what they did was that they hugged the trees to save them from being cut. Now the history is, so why did they do it is because, um, you know, um, people, you know, there were, there were laws that were being passed that um, gave um, rights uh, to private um, companies so that they can cut the forest, but the same rights were, weren't being given to uh, the local people, right? So, so the people, the locals said that, you know, uh, this is harmful deforestation activity in the name of industrialization, right? So initially it started with a lot of protest marches all, uh, all over and they said that, you know, elimination of contractual method of exploiting forests. So what they would do is that they would give contracts to people that, you know, okay, you can um, take this much land for this many, this many years and, you know, um, use the forest products, right? Uh, so what they wanted was that elimination of this contractual method of exploiting forests and also an increased involvement of local people in managing these forests. So because locals were locals felt that, you know, uh, where would they get uh, wood from? They were not being given access. And can you imagine in a place wherein, you know, you don't even have a solid electricity and this is their lifestyle. And also students, you know, you have to understand that locals, the way they live, right, that is not harmful. But what is harmful is that when these companies, they, the, 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 the way in which they fall trees, right, which they, um, you know, overuse the land and uh, for commercial purposes, the amount of trees that they cut is lot, lot, lot more than what these locals ever do. And this is their li lifestyle. This is how they, uh, you know, they live their lives. And they were not being given access to it. How would they how would they live right so you have this uh, very uh, prominent activist Sundarlal Bahuguna he's an um, he's an eco activist uh, okay ecological activist eco activist and he gave the slogan ecology is the permanent economy right? um, so you can't destroy it just like that you have to save it right and you when you so the idea was that when you give a lot of these contracts to uh, private um, industrialists they will just take away everything and nothing will be left for nature or the local people so there were also other uh, prominent activists like chandi prasad bhat and gora devi right chandi prasad bhat uh, he was advocating the growth of small scale industries based on sustainable forest use so you know the word sustainable is very important here because uh, it is often felt that you know um, so these people they wanted everything to be very sustainable right in in harmony with nature whereas you know these uh, these uh, industrialists wouldn't care how the nature worked so this uh, happened and then the landmark incidents wo incident was when the forest department he, they auctioned 2500 ash trees ash trees is uh, basically the ones with which you know you you uh, wood and furniture all of that is made uh, in the Remy forest of uh, Chamoli, dist Chamoli district in Uttarakhand to a private contractor and denied permission to the locals to cut trees on the ecological grounds. They said, you know, you're disturbing the ecology. So uh, locals cannot cut the trees, but 2,500 ash trees were given um, to a private contractor. So people were furious, right? Uh, the women physically prevented cutting of trees by hugging them and uh, in course of time, a ban was imposed on felling trees in Himalayan region. You know, you, they said that, you know, you can't disturb ecology for your uh, private interests, right? And women formed a lot of cooperatives to, and, um, and went to the forest. And they also organized fodder production that would not disturb ecological balance. And by 1980s, the movement was spread uh, throughout India. In other parts as well, people used similar methods. Um, so people were sensitized uh, to forest policies and the need for eco-sensitive measures.
this was chipko movement now our constitution is a living document right there are a lot of struggles like these you have the narmada bachao andolan the chipko movement lot of not only eco- ecological uh, but even other um, struggles for equality wherein you know the constitution has been acted like a living document now why is the constitution being referred to as a living document the word living document is a key here right because you know students constitution even if it was made some um, 70 years or so ago right till date it continues to be the major source right so whenever there is a movement they refer to the constitution to make their point and that's how they use it as a living document right anyone who's facing inequality they refer to the constitution to to say that you know this is my right i deserve this i it's it's unfair treatment how do they say it it's all based in the constitution because they use this constitution to make their points that is the reason why it is used as a it is termed as a living document right and the constitution recognizes all citizens are equal and ac- accordingly provisions have been made so in a democracy it is this continuous cycle right wherein one group tries to enlarge its sphere of democracy by demanding equal rights and justice right on the new as well as existing issues now for example you have the chipko movement the narmada bachao andolan right and in the end i would just like to say that equality and self respect are central to a democracy students right uh, the poor and the marginalized are worst affected by social and economic equality so what do we need we need redistribution we need to um, form better policies right to bring them to uplift them into the mainstream right on this note thank you so much i hope you enjoyed this chapter and um, hope to see you soon in our next session have a nice day